chatting with Ross Thompson from The Op. Ross, can you tell our viewers about who you are and what you do for The Op? Yes, I can. Thank you for having me on. It's so exciting. So I am a marketing manager at The Op. So The Op's been around for 26 years and we make licensed games and party games and all kinds of cool co-branded games with partners. And I do our marketing. So I go on shows like this and I help plan our marketing uh, plans and all kinds of cool stuff like that. So I, I get to, I get pretty much get to uh, talk about games all day. So you're in charge of marketing. That's really cool. How many games does your company publish every year? So we do all kinds of games. So we do our hobby games. We do party games. We have games that are in mass. We also do games that are for the Disney parks. And we do all kinds of puzzles and different things. So I think most people would normally see maybe about 30 games that we do, maybe 35 different games we do, but I'd say we do a lot more than that too because we do puzzles and playing cards and other cool things. Like we just came out with a, uh, a Disney uh, villain's clue that'll be on the shelf for that and we had different little cool things there. So Wait. we do all kinds of fun stuff, yeah. Wow. No way, no way you do 30 to, no way you oh, do yeah. 50 games a year. We do all kinds of stuff. The last company we interviewed does 25. Oh, cool. I mean, yeah, it's definitely what? exciting. There's so many games out. Like, look at your shelf back there, right? Yeah. So you publish about this, like, about um, almost two, almost three of these each year? Yeah. Well, so with Harry Potter, it's pretty interesting because we have our new House Cup competition game coming out, and then we have our new Hogwarts Battle expansion, too. So we've got a couple things that are coming out for Harry Potter every year. Last year we had the Death Eaters Rising, and then we had the Defense game, which you've got back there too, right? The little dueling game, right? So it's always fun. Yep. Today we're here to talk about your latest game to hit the shelves, the Harry Potter House Cup Competition. Yeah. It's like a really cool worker placement game. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? I totally can. I can even go grab it off the shelf right here. So in this game, what you're doing is it's our first worker placement game. So you're going to be working as the students from Hogwarts. So you're going to be playing as the different houses. You can look at the back here too, right? So you have this cool board and you're going to be sending all your students to school and they're going to be going to the different classrooms to be doing all kinds of cool stuff. As I pull off the, the little, uh, board here one of the fun things we have on this box which i really enjoy is each side has a different side for which house you're in <laughs> you guys know which harry, which harry potter house you are yep our dad is our dad is slytherin our mom is hufflepuff she is i am ravenclaw and, and i'm is um, gryffindor so we're all different ascops oh look at that cool that's good so this game this game is great for you because everybody can play as a different household so yeah, it's got all these different boards on there that help you score. It shows all the different students and their double layer, which is really nice because we have these cool Hogwarts tokens that slide right in there and they let you track as you score on your magic and your charms and your defense and they slide oh, and they so move. Those are like little holes that you can put the chips into. The totally top. right. Yeah, you can kind of see it there a little bit, Whoa, which is cute. Cool. And then along with that, as you go and you send your students to school and they raise up their points on the player board, they're going to be competing for all these different challenges that are here. So it'll be like, pass your newts or made the Quidditch team or hail the night bus, all kinds of fun stuff like that. And you're going to earn all these little points. So see the little gem icon at the bottom there? So like you earned 30 points. So that'll allow you to score on your player board, but... Here's the cool part. You have all these different gems you're going to be putting things into. So each one's worth five points, all these different gems. So it's going to be raising up as you score. So then at the end of each round, you can find out who has the most points. But there is no card that says Dumbledore just gives 
all the winning points to Gryffindor. So sorry about that. How but, dare you, know, you! I know, horrible. Are you a Gryffindor? <laughs> I'm actually a Hufflepuff. So wow. yeah, all about being oh, social and being with friends, right? It's it's the best house, but every no, house is cool. No, it's not Gryffindor. <laughs> Harry Potter's a Gryffindor. Oh, Harry Potter's a, yeah. So that's that's a Harry Potter Hogwarts battle. It's out now, or, or uh, House Cup competition, which is out now, so people can find it on their store shelves. We'll have a lot more for about it too. Cool. We love Scooby Doo Escape the Haunted Mansion. I play the Scooby, and I love the tricks and traps. Zoe plays Ooh. Daphne. And what was your favorite part about the game? And who? Were oh you? man. So that game is so much fun. So Sen Fung Lim and Jay Cormier did a great job uh, telling the story. It felt just like an episode, you know? And so I, it really did, right? So I, I think it's pretty funny. I think there's a couple of things I really enjoy. I think everybody, when they play as Scooby, they have to read as Scooby, right? Now we're going, oh, jokes, Shaggy. Oh, yeah. And then was kind of a cute little Easter egg, which you guys may want to go back in. Because there's parts in the game where not all the characters are out there on the board, right? Sometimes yeah, it's just like, Thelma. Like the beginning and the end. Mm-hmm. So if you go through their book, there's a little Easter egg in there that tells you what they're up to when they're not on the board. What Easter egg? Yeah, you got to go find it. It's in their books. If you go read it, you can find out where Velma is or where Shaggy is when they aren't on the on the table. That's Seriously? kind of fun, huh? Yeah, look at that. Awesome. Next question. I'm ready. Let's um, do it. I love the artwork for Super Cats, and my favorite part is when everybody else becomes Robo Dog. Robo Dog. So who <laughs> who had the idea of making the collar show what they're going to turn into? So that was a really cool game that we were able to work with our partners uh, for that. And so their whole design team, which they've done stuff like Seven Wonders and a couple other games. So that was a game that they pitched to us and we were really excited to be a part of that because they're, they're doing the European distribution. We're doing the North American parts for that. So they already had that when they presented it to us. And so they had a lot of cool work behind the scenes and we were able to kind of help uh, elevate it here in the U.S. So they they had all that kind of lined up, and we were glad to kind of join the team to fight off the Robo Dog, the Super Cats. So it's good. That game is cute. I love the art for that. Yeah, is that I your dog impression? Really like Super Cats. We love watching Duck Tales, and we love the theme song. Yeah, we had it every single. Yeah, time. how did you get Steve Jackson and Disney to team up with you to make um duck, Munchkin Ducktales? Because we are going to get that as soon as possible. Cool. That is by far one of my favorite Munchkins that we've done. I have a whole bunch of Munchkins down over there, right? So it's kind of cute. Oh, yeah, we got ours too. It's the way to go, right? So Ducktales. Oh, oh, nice, nice. Yeah, I I played so much Munchkin growing up, and so it was really fun to be able to be a part of the op. And then get to work with Steve Jackson and their whole team over there. We've got a whole bunch of Munchkins with them from Marvel and Adventure Time and Night Before Christmas. We also just announced we're going to be doing Munchkin Disney, too, which that's going to be a whole big thing. Oh, yeah. But with DuckTales, what's great is you get to play in the classic cartoon, right? So you can be all the different characters launch from pad. Huey, Dewey, Louie and, like, and Launchpad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's so going to be Launchpad. As he should. Our dad is so going to be launch bad. Have you guys watched Tailspin yet? Oh, wow. Okay. It looks like some education is going to happen. That'll be great. Uh, that's another cartoon in the world of DuckTales. Um, I'm, me so. and dad are starting to watch Darkwing Duck. Uh, awesome. That's great. And uh, in, so, yeah. so In Super Cats, one of the guys turned into Darkwing Duck. Mm -hmm. That's how that works, right? You got to transform and power it up. Darkwing Duck. Doo -doo -doo. So, yeah, yeah. So with DuckTales, though, it's it's great because you get to kind of play through the classic cartoon and do all these things. We love being able to work with Steve Jackson games and all the different IPs that we get to do. So DuckTales, when we were talking about doing Disney things, it just kind of made sense that we could make it happen. Yeah. All righty, um, next question. Let's do it. Um, Hogwarts Battle... I like I love Hogwarts Battle. We did it all summer. Last nice. summer we did it all summer working through every single one. And we completed them all. Oh, yeah. congratulations. Game 6 is so hard, isn't it? 
Yeah. Game seven is kind of easier than game six. I would definitely agree with that. But because if you get that like Lucius and Basilisk combo in there, it really makes it difficult. Yeah, that happened to us. That's why we lost to that one, I think, more than we lost the first one. But in total, absolutely not. Because we played it a lot, kept losing on level one and two. That's good. I, I didn't hear level... your question, did I? What? Oh, we're good. But... Oh, cool. Because well, we, we had the, uh, that expansion coming out, right? Yeah. Have you guys seen that yet? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so we have the new one with uh, Charms and Potions. It's going to add a fifth player. So you can play as Ginny Weasley. <laughs> yeah, we even already um, have made we another play, We board. tried playing five players. Oh, that's cool. Is that like laser printed? Uh, yeah, 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 that's wood it's wood burned it. it. Oh, that's super cool. Uh, yeah, like that. wood burned it. So now we can play with my mom's friend. His name is Rob. Oh, cool. Well, when, when you guys play with Rob, you can play as Ginny, which will be super cool. And then it adds a whole new board as well that'll be adding on to the player board and it will let you uh play play new charms and do new uh, magic abilities and at the same time it's also going to let you uh build and kind of manage your potions so there's going to be a whole new uh, extra abilities that you get to do for each character you're going to have new cards they're going to give you new actions you can do each turn and new options so you have to help defend all your locations it's really that's cool and it adds four new games too that's how yeah, i heard really that fun. that was coming out next month it is. It's literally going to be next month, which it's amazing how far the year's already gone, right? Here we are. The year's in in the Harry Potter Hogwarts battle. Yeah, so it's going to add four more games, too, so you're going to have all plenty to do. Oh, and we have Toy Story. Obstacles and nice. Adventures. Have you guys played all the way through that one, too? Have you guys played through all those, or not yet? Oh, so we played this one, this one. This one only me and Dad played, and this one we all played. Cool. What'd you guys think of the Monster Box expansion games? Were those pretty hard, or? I like them. Good. Yeah. Cool. What's your favorite part of Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle? So I have a group that I get to play with at home, and and we uh, play through all the different stuff. I like that it's a team game, so I like that it's co-op. I enjoy games where we all get to play together, uh, so that's always a good time. For me. And I'm looking forward to playing Charms and Potions with them because I think it's going to be really cool. Yeah. It seems that it's harder with more than how many players you're supposed to play with. Yeah, it's going to be neat. We definitely did some testing to make sure that having a fifth player still works out and balances pretty well. So it'll be good. Yeah. Is there anything? So a dr I, I heard that you dress up and fight. Oh man, cool. So, we're getting... so it's really fun. So I'm a part of a medieval club called the SCA or the Society for Creative Anachronism. It's been around for like 50 years. And so there's, we've split up the whole world into different kingdoms. So like I'm in a kingdom called Kaid, which is essentially Southern California. And then there's, you can do arts and sciences. You can do, it's dressing up and camping and doing all kinds of cool things. So I really enjoy the fighting part of it. So I wear armor. And I get to swing swords, and so you had brought it up early, so I did totally bring my helmet. Whoa, so, that's super cool. Can so here's my Viking that? helmet. Uh, I have the head. I have. Uh, give, give me a second. Let me put it on. Okay. Oh. All right. That is so cool. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so. Yeah, so that's my Viking helmet. I can tell oh, it's yeah. harder. To, I can tell it's easier to put on than take off. Yeah, it's a little tight around the head, but that's a good thing, though, right? So how the fighting works is we've got these uh, sticks that are made out of rattan, which is kind of like a solid bamboo. And so you're swinging those, and you want to hit them uh, hard enough where they would get hurt, but you're not trying to hurt them, hurt them. Right? So you want to hit them where they're going to feel it. So it's you're not tapping them, but it's a, it's a good solid swing. Um, and back before COVID, I was running a sword fighting class at my house on Mondays. So I was teaching people how to sword fight and do all kinds of cool stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we have big battles with like hundreds of people on both sides. And there's lots of stuff for kids, too. So they have youth fighting uh, in their own category and all kinds of cool stuff. Is there anything you else? Oh, you should have um, um, what? What's your favorite board game in and out of your company? 
So that's a good question. So I think in my company, the fav my favorite game that we have um, would be, uh, it's a new game coming out. So it's not, it's not ready yet, but my favorite game is the SpongeBob SquarePants Plankton Rising game. Uh, so I'm super jazzed for that. So it's a, it's a rising engine, which is it's all the dice engine building games. So you're doing the different dice rolling and that, but you're playing as SpongeBob, Sally, and Plankton and Squidward. So I, I like it. Yeah, right? Oh yeah, so you, but it, it's fun because it's kind of off the bit. You're not just fighting against evil and doing all these things. You have to stop Plankton from uh, stealing the Krabby Patty recipe, right? So that's a, it's a big thing there. All I can think about is this episode we watched in SpongeBob where um, Plankton said, there's this gigantic Krabby Patty and he was like, take me home, daddy. And, he <laughs> jumped at it, and then it started rolling him around. That's so funny. So yeah, so he's going to be at one of the miniature in the game. So he'll be standing on the on the square doing the whole Thanos pose. It'll be super fun. Um, but then outside of the company, um, I'd probably say favorite board game is going to be Twilight Imperium. So and that's a it's a big heavy game. It's like a twelve hour board game where you're playing as your oh, space race. Oh, half a day, totally. Yeah, you, you, it takes so much planning too. You've got to start in the morning and make sure everybody's set. But you're playing as your uh, faction, and you're so, working to do. Uh, so you have to start at six, and so you have to well, you start at six in the morning, and you know, the end at eight at night. That's how that would work. Totally. I don't know if you're going to get people to play at six in the morning. We normally start at like maybe ten or eleven. Ten, because uh, ten would make it so twelve at a, night. Midnight. Yeah, it's a full day. Yeah. Half a so day. We, the cool thing is the game right now with the new edition they just came out with, it's about a five hour game. So you can, the new edition with fourth from, they came out with Fantasy Flight Games is like a four to five hour game, maybe six hours, but it can go longer. So when you prep for it, you have to know that, hey, we're going to be here all day playing this game. What, is there anything else you wanted to talk about, Ross? Well, I want to say thank you so much for having me on. It has been great to be a part of this interview, but also we're going to be doing a lot of fun stuff for Comic-Con and Gen Con uh, the next couple of weeks. So if you guys want to watch, we're going to do anything called The Op at Home. So we've been filming all these cool panels like here on Zoom. We've been doing uh, all these demos, all kinds of cool stuff. So people want to learn about all the new Harry Potter games we're doing. Cammy talks in depth about uh, Charms and Potions, which is super cool. So I'll have to let her know about the, the Woodburn to player board because that's super neat. So we're going to have all this cool stuff online. So be sure to, if you go to the op website, you can see what we're going. But we're going to have stuff for Comic-Con and for Gen Con going on because we're bummed we can't go in person. But I'm glad we get to do things like this. So thank you so much. I think that wraps it up. Thank you, Ross, for joining us and for talking about all the hotness coming out of the op. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who tuned in to watch. Join us next Tuesday for another episode of Chits. And Chats. Until next time, stay safe. And stay happy. Bye. Bye.